we began to become aware that the penguins all around Banks Peninsula were in trouble. The thing is, my husband and I, we were uh, born and bred on the peninsula, so we were used to seeing a penguin colony in every bay. Um, but when we, when we started going back to those old haunts that we'd gone to as children and young, you know, teenagers, uh, we found the penguins had all gone. And that's when we started looking critically around our own backyard. Um, and when we did, we found dead penguins everywhere. Realised if somebody didn't do something to save this colony, um, then yeah, we'd, our penguin colony would go the same way. The penguins would be lost. But I can tell you that out there, I have seen the penguins out there on a school of fish, hunting, feeding, and the other seabirds, such as the cormorants and the shags, are actually taking a cue from the penguins when to go in and get the fish. So probably you've got the dolphins or the fish up underneath, they push the school up. And the penguins, they communicate with one another, yapping, and they group together as a group. And then they'll dive as a group into that shoal of fish, down into that whole shoal of fish. And as soon as they do so, everything else goes. <laughs> so everything's taken, but they're taking that cue off the penguins. So you see, everything is actually important. You know, if there were no penguins, then it's not going to be so easy for the other seabirds. Um, there seems to be a relationship there and an understanding of just, you know, how to manage these shoals of fish for food. And uh, yeah, everything's important. Well, we um, never intended to actually run tours, um, but everybody wants to see penguins. And because this colony is so big, and nesting right up to an altitude of over 200 metres and anything up to 700 metres inland, those penguins need every hour of darkness they can get just to get from the sea and up to their nest to feed their chicks. And people and with torches running around trying to see penguins, take photographs, chases them back into the ocean all the time. So the penguins are not getting up there, they're getting stressed and they're not getting up there to feed their chicks in time. So because they've got the fish, they regurgitate the fish, they get stressed, their metabolism rises, they start to digest the food, so the chicks don't get as much. And um, so it affects the breeding. It's, in particular, yellow-eyed penguins are very badly affected by people actually just wanting to see them. So we thought, well, gosh, what are we gonna do? Um, this colony was discovered, um, Department of Conservation, when this became a marine reserve, actually heightened the awareness that the penguins were here and we suddenly started to have the troubles. So we thought, right, what, perhaps, what we can do? I went out and I sat on the hillside out there. I thought, now how can you see penguins without disturbing them? And I started to see certain patterns, started to understand certain patterns of what they would tolerate and what they wouldn't tolerate, what would affect them, what wouldn't affect them. And um, so we geared our tours around um, what wouldn't affect them or would affect them the least. And um, so we um, started to run the tours just purely to control public access. But on Bangs Peninsula, um, we only had six breeding pair of yellow eyes. They only found two breeding pair last season and no chicks survived last season. So these guys, it's, it's a real issue. Um, so Banks Peninsula might be facing, to totally losing these penguins and all of the mainland of New Zealand. So um, a lot of conservation work's done with the yellow eyes and um, trapping is another important thing, um, especially like ferrets and feral cats are a huge problem for the yellow eyes. Um, another massive problem for yellow eyes is people's dogs. Um, dogs kill a lot of yellow-eyed penguins so we have to be very careful. Dogs on beaches, big problem.